Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello to you. Welcome back to the channel where today you join me in the south of France at Miraval, Dunlop's test track, to go for my first drive in the almighty Porsche 911 GT2 RS. Now, when I secured the allocation for my GT3, you were all asking me if I was going to be able to get my hands on one of these. Sadly, no, but today I can take it for a drive and see what it's all about. The car's here running on Dunlop's Sport Max Race 2 tyres. And also, later on, we're going to jump into one for a hot lap running on some new prototype tyres. I'm looking forward to that, but first, let's get started, take a walk around of the car, then jump in to go out and experience it on track. Let's get started with a walk around of the GT2 RS, the most powerful production Porsche 911 ever. It has 700 horsepower from the rear mounted 3.8 litre twin turbocharged flat six and mixes a number of different elements. So the body and engine similar to the 911 turbo, the aerodynamics more akin to the GT3 RS. You're no doubt familiar with its record time at the Nürburgring Nordschleife, six minutes, 47.3 seconds, making that the record Record for a production car around the green hell. I'm here with Dunlop to experience the car on their test track and we're going to be driving it on the Sport Max Race 2 tyres. They're a partner of Porsche and developed the second generation of the tyre specifically for this car. We've got 21 inch magnesium wheels at the back, the Visac package, with 325 section tyres. At the front, 20 inch wheels with 265 section, but these tyres are very much built for track days, that kind of driving, so perfect for the occasion on a nice warm day like we have here. The aerodynamics of the car are on a crazy level, but before we get to the huge rear wing at the back, let's start off around the front where we have the extended front splitter with the GT2 RS badging there in the middle of it. Either side of that, those large air intakes for the optimum cooling, significantly larger than on other cars before. If we come behind above the arches, we have the louvres there, which reduce swelling and improve the downforce. And also on the bonnet, you'll notice the knacker ducts that we have there, which are for brake cooling. So the air directed through inside the car. It's fitted with a number of carbon fibre components, carbon fibre reinforced plastic, so parts like the bonnet, the wings, those louvres that we've seen, the intakes along the side that you can see as well, the mirrors, the top part of the mirror cap, and also this wing at the back, as well as the intakes you have right there for cooling directly through to the engine. The total wet weight of the car is 1,470 kilos, which is of course very light. It's also fitted with technology like rear wheel steering, which help keep it planted in tight corners. But this is a car designed for downforce, for aero, and for getting you very quickly around a tight twisty track like we have here. It also has a number of carbon components used on the inside, again, to keep weight down. And you can opt to have the Visac package to save yet further another 21,000 pounds on top of the 208,000 pound list price, but that's 30 kilos kilos lighter than the regular club sport version of this car. Along with that also, you get the signature decorative stripe that you can see up the bonnet, so having the centre section painted surrounded by carbon, and that continues up to the magnesium roof that we have on the top. But let's just open up the doors and have a quick look inside the car here to see what this looks like, where we have the bucket seats with the six-point harnesses. The interior is finished in a very nice way. We've got the titanium cage. Another very big part of the Visac package is the 12 kilos you save by having a titanium roll cage. You save another 11 and a half kilos by having the center lock magnesium wheels and then five kilos more across the rest of the car comes from use of carbon fiber components elsewhere down there we've also got the fire extinguisher but you can see this is a car with intent the seven speed PDK extra honed in on this car even more so ready and prepared for the racetrack it is of course rear wheel drive the engine is also mounted at the rear 700 horsepower of it 750 newton meters and it will do 0 to 100 in just 2.8 seconds 0 to 200 in 8.3 0 to 300 is just 22.1 seconds and onto a top speed of 340 kilometers per hour that is very very fast now for all of that power the 700 horsepower 750 newton meters you need a lot of cooling and the ram air collectors the technical name for that part above the engine at the rear is responsible for that. But the car is stripped out, it's very much ready for purpose, and I'm rather looking forward to getting this one out. All right then, no more talking. Let's jump into the car, head out onto Dunlop's track to experience the GT2 RS, its Sportmax Race 2 tires. I'm rather looking forward to this one. Let's go. Let us start it up. Here we go then. 
then my first outing in the GT2 RS. Let's actually put it into PDK Sport, track suspension, exhaust open, tyres have been deflated for the occasion of course. I think we're all ready, I think we're all set completely. Feels comfortable, feels good. Let's head around towards the track. Harnessed up, obviously, track car on the racetrack. Excitement right now in quite a lot of overload as we go out through the barriers into the pit lane. I've been looking forward to driving this car for a very long time, so a big thanks to Dunlop for the opportunity. I think it's straight round though, out towards the uh, gate to the circuit. Of course, it's letting us know about the seat belt because we've got the harnesses, which means the three point isn't in. But I get to here, wait a moment till we get the green light. There we go. It's time to drive a GT2 RS. Ah, there we go, the valves open up nice and gently just to get us started, to get familiar and comfortable with the car. I've had a quick sighting lap with the track in a GT3 RS, which was an exciting moment on its own. But a big thing about this is also to do with the tyres that we're driving on, and what I've been learning in some workshops ahead of the drive is how much difference it makes using so many different elements, different compounds, different materials, different raw materials to make the actual tyre. And obviously, the tyre warmth and getting heat into the tyres is a significant part of that because tyres for the road aren't like racing slicks. They don't need quite so much time to get them warmed up. But this feels good already as we head around the track here. this car honestly I'm just taking it cooler now just for a moment but the precision of it all is absurd it's absolutely astonishing and I'm driving it myself so quickly it's genuinely making me start to feel well I can feel it inside let's say the way it's going around the corners and just holding on off we go again then I am never it's the way when the boost kicks in. It's just so savagely fast. Of course, acceleration requires tires to be gripping as well. Cornering like this, a, a downhill through the undulations of this track, clinging on here with the off camber. Watching the speedometer rise, the numbers. It's honestly 
but it's the way he does this in such a usable way. It feels so communicative. I know what the car's doing. I know where it's going. I know what it's telling me. You don't get that naturally aspirated driver from the engine. But what you get instead is this feeling that is so astonishing. It really is though, the braking, that's the most incredible sensation. You can use the aero of the car, you can feel both the mechanical side of it, but also the aerodynamics at work that are really keeping the car so planted. It all has to work in harmony. So Dunlop and Porsche, for example, work together to develop this car, this combination, this setup. Porsche come to Dunlop saying, you know, we want to make this. And then they get started. A significant time as we know around the Nürburgring but around any track it's astonishing honestly that is the word for it right now just <laughs> putting the power in here around the corner oops into the red line but I don't really mind the red line 7,000 rpm it's gonna be a bit more gentle on the brakes actually no I say that even there still very firm so we go around T1 this tight right hander and it's this, this is the corner that I'm amazed by Downhill, then we have the off camber here. One thing that's quite interesting to me is that the power is so linked to the pressure on the throttle pedal. I mean, that's a no brainer, right? But in here, when you put your foot all the way down, you get maximum attack. That's when it's just frankly. It doesn't add up, it doesn't make sense. Your brain can't work out how this car has so much power. What a cracking combination. This car, these tires, this track, I'm speechless. It's just out of this world. Absolutely out of this world. What a drive. Oh my days. Oh my days indeed. Good lordy. I could just keep doing this. I'm I'm flabbergasted by the performance, the capability. This is a spectacular car. I don't know how Porsche have done it. This is epic beyond words. I'm just going to show you a little bit more around the interior of the car. It's very similar to what we've seen in other 911s, my GT3 for example, but a few things that are different. So the GT2 RS side sill, that's not a huge surprise. We've also got the Visac RS embroidery in the headrest if you have the Visac package. This is the titanium roll cage which is lighter and just looks awesome to be completely honest. Some other nice small touches, the red 12 o'clock stripe on the Alcantara steering wheel, the titanium coloured uh, dashboard rev counter that you have which is for the GT2 RS. We've got the carbon fibre trim and the Visac RS badging over there, the plaque as well. But this is a car for purpose. This is the very top end of 911. We've got adaptive suspension dampers, so that's the button control through here, PDK Sport for the gearbox, open the exhaust. You can hear that got louder. There is also a lift system which will raise the front up to 50 kilometers per hour and then down at the bottom your traction toggles as well should you wish. So, what a nice car. Mix of leather and Alcantara. Very, very special thing to be driving. What an experience here with Dunlop. The thing with the engine sound that this car makes is it's such a deep grumble. Yes, it's not a naturally aspirated GT3 RS engine, for example, but also look at the intricate shapes of the aero around the lower rear sections. It's a strong noise. It's very loud, very aggressive, and I think very much shows the intent of this car. This time around, I want to have a little bit more thought with regards to the tyre technology and how that is so crucial and critical to this kind of drive. I mean, this is a hugely twisty and undulating circuit. It's a circuit where this car is very much designed. I think it almost mimics the kind of style of the Nürburgring Nordschleifer. It is that kind of track, that kind of tarmac, slightly bumpy, slightly jumpy around. You've got small curves that you don't really want to run over. They're quite aggressive. But tyres are such a big part of acceleration, of braking, and of course, of cornering. So not only do you have 
have this sensation of grip as you go around the corner, the agility that the car can support and offer you, but also instant power delivery through to the tarmac, and that comes down to different compounds that are used and the way it's created and tested to engineer the absolute best outcome. Then when you're braking, as has been completely blowing my mind, that again is all about contact patch with the ground. And I'm just driving a little bit slow at the moment to think about this, but still, I think if you looked at this gentle drive, it would be a very, very, very quick lap. This is probably faster than the GT3 can drive, even when it looks like I'm driving slowly. Then when you go the other way and you go full pace, oh my goodness, it's just... I think it's time for another cool down lap. I am blown out of my mind by this experience. I am completely having to recalibrate any car I think I've ever driven in anger because I feel completely attuned with what's going on. I can feel what the car is doing, what the tires are doing, and it's actually incredible how that is a real thing, how you are aware of what is happening underneath you, your contact point to the ground. The most important thing really is that interaction with the tarmac and especially when it becomes warm like this. It's just amazing, absolutely amazing. Now I'm going to jump into the GT2 RS running a particularly interesting set of prototype tyres that we can have a quick look at afterwards. I'll be driven by Porsche test driver Timo Kluck, but I'm looking forward to seeing quite how well this sticks, so let's get in. In we hop. So then, how are you? Fine. And you, are nice you okay? Nice to meet you. Brilliant, yeah, nice thank you very much. Okay. Looking forward to this. Yes. So. Please fasten seatbelt. The new GT2 RS <laughs> with the uh, special tire from from Dunlop. Indeed. What is coming in the in the future? So you've done you've done a fair amount of testing with these, man. Yes, yes. Normally, normally I make I make I make my testing for the for the serial cars, but also a lot of times we work together with the motorsport uh, department because mm. my part, what I what I look for is tires. Mm. So and then you can you can work together and one guy can help the other guy. I'm not sure how well I'm going to be able to ask you questions while we're driving. So we start off with tyres that are slightly warm but basically cold, but still. Goodness me, the acceleration is crazy. What's your favorite part of this job? My favorite part of this job is to drive in a car like this and go on these tracks home. <laughs> I'm not a guy for the office. Yeah. <laughs> I hate to go to the office. Back. Yes. Are you like I mean 
You must be consciously considering different parameters and different aspects. Yes. And uh, yeah, you have to look what is the balance in the car. What is the grip level of the tire? And uh, is, it, is the drivability good or bad? So that's the things where we look for. Is it easy to drive or difficult to drive? Because also we have to look for our customer. And so you have a lot of things where you have to look. It has to be said, that was quite an experience. Okay. Thank you ever so much. You're welcome, you're welcome. Okay. I'm going to be stumbling out of this car. <laughs> That's taken Take care. the wind completely out of my sails. Thank you ever so much. Okay, see you. Wow. Stickiness beyond belief. I need a moment to catch my breath. Here are the tyres in question. So this tyre on the left is the regular Sportmax Race 2. I say regular, but it's already a pretty specialised tyre. On the right hand side, we have the new prototype that was being worn by that GT2 RS. And you can immediately see some visual differences, but of course there are also compound differences. This is a prototype tyre that is basically 40% more performance or so. Very, very specifically a track day tyre. And you can see the biggest things come in terms of the depth of the tread inside it, the cuts that you have over towards the outside of the tyre which is of course where the car is leaning when you're driving more aggressively and when you get this up to temperature you can imagine that it's basically the closest thing you can get to a slick that is actually homologated. A slight little bonus for me because I'm going to jump in now into the GT Silver GT2 RS, the one wearing those prototype tyres to see what this is like. Let's go! I am hyper intrigued to see what this is going to be like. Obviously get the harnesses done up. You always feel so good in six point harnesses in these bucket seats. So straight out onto the track, nice and comfortable. This car's done 16 and a half thousand kilometers in the GT2 RS test car. Whew, haven't talked that much actually about the interior of it. Familiar bucket seats from the GT3, but track is open. Out we go, green light, and onto track we go. The sounds of a car that's done some mileage are just incredible. driving on get closer to racing slicks you have to be very aware of the temperature so tires like this obviously built to just be driven on the track need a few laps just to get the heat into them but when they have heat into them my word do you feel that they just cling on i feel like it would have been slightly slipping out there and then it pulls itself back in in a way that you can't really comprehend just dodging some dirt on the tarmac as well stretch to get a feel out of it. Yeah, the way they hold there. There's so much confidence from them, but we need to cool down the car. Just a quick little stint. This day, this day is just something else. <laughs> What a day today has been. And you might spot also, there is a GT3 RS.2 there as well, which I've also taken out for a drive, but today is about the big daddy, the GT2 RS. Driving it with Dunlop's Sportmax Race 2 tires and also their prototype for the future on the GT Silver car. What an experience that was that genuinely 
made me feel very, very unwell. Just how sticky it is. That's actually a compliment to the car. How much grip it has, the power, the acceleration, the cornering ability and the braking. And obviously that all comes from having a sticky tire that is very warm and fit for the purpose. So I have to say, I'm very impressed with my experience today. The GT2 RS has been absolutely mind blowing. I know I've said that quite a few times, but I think that emphasizes quite how much I mean it from this experience. What a car. The owners of these are very, very, very lucky people. There aren't that many of them out there. Maybe it's a thousand or so. It's not a confirmed number from Porsche other than that it's limited in terms of production. But my drive and experience today of the Visac package GT2 RS, even if it's very windy, and I apologize for that, has been one that I'm not gonna be forgetting in a hurry. So a big thanks to Dunlop for the opportunity to come down today, drive the cars with them, and enjoy their new future tires. What? the day it's been. Anyway, that's it for this time. Thank you very much as always, guys. I appreciate your support and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.